I always hit go before I actually think of what I want to say. So like I have the idea, I just don't know exactly. It's just like talk therapy. Like that's what counseling is right now. I have a lot that I have to say. And I'm trying to get everything out so I'm going to be prepared for this fucking CPS interview where all they want to do is talk to me. But I have a phobia of anyone who can control my life. Because my parents did this to me my whole life. And they've done it again. I just don't know what to do. I don't know what's happening next. I don't know if my mom is going to call the cops again. I don't know if she's going to drive through my cul-de-sac. I don't know if my dad's going to show up in my backyard and talk to my kids on the trampoline again when I didn't know he was here. I don't know if that Jeep that had the lights off or whatever car that was, if that was my mom's friend from Burley. Because Cody said it had Burley plates and the headlights were off at night. Driving through our cul-de-sac. No one should be in here without headlights on. They drove right in and we saw them. He drove, They drove, drove right out. In the middle of the night with no headlights on. Okay, come on. Time is kind of like weird. Where time kind of mixes together. When you... I don't know if it's because I have PTSD or trauma or what but something things seem like they're happening now when they happened a long time ago and I can't quite remember like what's what happened when and then my memory doesn't work as well and I'm just worried that everything's gonna leave my head before I remember and I'm just praying that those cops have body cam footage so that I can sue the Chubbuck Police Department I think they did because I saw like circular lights on their vests. So, like, please let that have been a camera. Please have all this recorded. Please. You will watch that and you'll be like, that girl's not in that body. And then you'll be like, oh, it's dissociation. Oh, it's because her parents abused her from a very young age. Yes, her dad did get arrested when she was 10 for choking her, which is one of the top indicators that that person is willing to commit. Homicide, it wasn't just, whoops, I beat my kid. It was, I strangled my child by the neck. And then my mom dropped the charges. I bet she got paid off by his millionaire parents. I gotta breathe. I just am like, this is insane. This is insane. This is insane making because this is what they did to me my whole life. <clears throat> I just can't stop. I can't stop talking because I'm like, this is how they get you. This is how my parents get me. This is what they do. This is what they've always done. Why do you think I didn't talk? Why do you think I have journals and journals and journals? Because do you think I was allowed to speak back then? Who would I have told? My counselor? So they could tell my parents? I'm talking about a school counselor in high school or junior high or elementary school. So they'd inform my parents and I'd get beat more? Taken out of my favorite school? Like who is safe to tell? It's not going to go immediately to the parent. Why do adults not talk to kids? I don't know what to do. It's not even like I'm in big trouble. Like, obviously, I'm going to be like, they're going to be like, have you ever wanted to murder your children? And I'll be like, no. And they'll be like, do you like your children? <clears throat> and I'll be like, yes. My kids are fucking awesome and look at how cute they are. And they'll be like, well, why were your YouTube videos so weird? And I'll be like, what are you talking about? I don't even know who reported what. And they said YouTube video, but are they talking about my poems on my blog? Like, my ten poems are gone, or ten videos are gone. Did someone report those? Which ones even were those? I don't have them labeled. I don't know which ten are gone, because YouTube didn't tell me. Was there something, like, tell me what they were so I can tell you whatever you're asking. I don't know. What are my poems talking about? Childhood abuse. Why are they talking about that? Let's back up. 
<clears throat> okay. So I'm going to talk about how I think I might have gotten into this situation. But these are just guesses. Here's my PTSD phobia bracelet that please don't arrest me. <laughs> arrest me if you have to, but don't beat me excessively. I'm not very big. And I had my hands cuffed behind my back. Don't keep beating me for hours. Just handcuff me. Put me in the car. Throw me in the car. Stop hitting and hurting and beating me and telling me to shut up and lifting me by my, by my arm behind my back. Just just lift me up. I'm not that heavy. There's a lot of you. A lot of firefighters, a lot of cops, a lot of people. A lot of men with a lot of spotlights in front of that house down the street where I ran to. Do you think people normally run from cops? At 2.30 in the morning? Do you think it could have had to do with the fact that my mom called you and said she's going to murder her kids and you, I guess, believed her? Which is fine. But the second that you see that I am not carrying a weapon, not in my right mind because you scared me. Because my parents used to hold me down and beat me. And my parents used to hold me down and stroke my face and tell me they loved me. And I'm, is everything Okay. And it is traumatic and I have dissociation, which is leaving my brain to hide from the abuse. And then when the cops were asking questions and they weren't leaving and then they asked Cody to go with them and I got afraid and I was like, they're taking Cody away. They're going to kill me. They're going to kill Cody. They're going to shoot him. They always shoot men. They're going to shoot me because I can't stop talking. Oh my God, what's happening? What's happening? And I left and I was like, think of something. Think of your book. What are you writing right now? Think about Johnny Depp. Think about being funny. Think about your play. Think about run. And I ran. To distract from Cody or I don't know. I'm not quite sure. And then I ran and I was like, please, I got to save him. He's like, he's in danger. And then I got really like in out of control. And then they chased me and tackled me. I don't remember a lot of it, but I do remember I was like flipping out. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, they're going to kill me. They're gonna... And I like banged on someone's door. I was like, help me, help me, help me. And then they didn't answer because it was like three in the morning. And then they tackled me and beat me and beat me and beat me and handcuffed me too tight. Way too tight. They handcuffed me way too tight. They need to fix handcuffs. They shouldn't be torture devices. They should be restraints. They shouldn't hurt and make me scream. And then when I scream, they tell me to shut up. And I'm screaming because of the agony. It's torture. The, uh, the amount of pain on my wrists. <coughs> the amount of pain on my wrists. And the bones in my arms. Oh, I... I can't, I don't even, I don't even know how they got it that tight. Like, did they just put it on and go wham? So it would like go past the point that it should. So it was like bulging. Like, I don't know how handcuffs work, but the way that they put them on me, I think I went insane from the pain. I think I was literally, literally being tortured. Have you ever had a speculum up your vagina? Have you ever been to the, um, what is it called? OBGYN? If you're pregnant or getting a pap smear? Imagine they stick that up your vagina and go, wham! That's how a handcuff feels on your wrists. <clears throat> and I'm sure if you've had a speculum up your vagina, you're like, oh my god, ow, ow! Because it hurts. Now imagine it's your wrist and they slam these cuffs on your arms and you're just like, oh my god! And then they're like, don't talk. And you're like, oh my god! And they're like moving you so that it's hurting your wrists. And then you're just like, I can't get out of pain. I can't get out of pain. Imagine they're jamming that speculum up your vagina. You know how that feels. If you're a woman, now imagine it's on your bones on your arms. Two of them, and every way you turn, it hurts one wrist or two wrists. And then they're lifting you up, and it's hurting, and you're screaming. And you're like, oh my god. And they're like, shut up. And then they're hitting you, and punching you, and hurting you. And this is what they do to black men. Do you want them to do it to you? Because why did they do it to me? Because my mom called in. I think it's my mom. Obviously, I have to have a disclaimer. I could be wrong. It could be Troy from my blog. It could be someone else. It could be my sister, brother. I don't know. I think it's my mom, possibly my dad. I don't know. It could be some random YouTube person, but I doubt that. Like, because I don't know. I don't know how this works, but I think it's my mom. But just think, if you don't support the black people who are getting arrested. Did you see the Black Lives Matter protest when they, like, broke into those college students' car and, like, pulled the girl and the guy out and, like, beat them? And they were, like, college students at some fancy college and then they were on the news. Do you remember that? I do. And I was like, damn, I am so sorry. And then they sued him and stuff, which I, apparently I'm going to have to do that now. I don't mind. I just don't want to sue people. But what happened to me, like, I get, my counselor's like, well, they thought, 
that you're going to murder your kids. I'm like, I get that. But at some point, just put the cuffs on lightly and put me in the car. Like, what? Why did you have to hurt me so much? Why did you put those cuffs on too tight? Are you going to blame me for that? You're going to say that I did it? I couldn't even move and I was screaming because it hurt so bad. Those handcuffs hurt. It shouldn't be painful. Put some padding on those goddamn things. This is not... We don't need to torture people. Like, come on. You shouldn't inflict pain if someone's a bad guy. And if I'm a bad guy because my mom says I'm a bad guy, check before torturing me. Okay? I had trauma. I have PTSD because that woman has abused me my whole life. And she just did it again. And she used the legal system to do it. If it is my mom. She used the cops to abuse me. Do you realize that? That I looked crazy because I have a past of trauma? And I have diagnosed PTSD? And you woke me up in the middle of the night to do a welfare check so you could kill me? If I were black, I would be dead. You know that, right? If I were a black man and they said this man was gonna murder his kids, you know I'd be dead. But I was a white woman who was sleeping and I'm 145 pounds. And they still tortured me and they still beat me and they still were very, 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 very rough on me. Yeah, I get I looked a little nuts. I get that I went to a place in my brain where I thought I could get away because I knew <clears throat> my kids were already with a safe place. They were already with someone else. They're not dead. I'm not Lori Daybell. My kids are here and they're alive. <sighs> but my kids weren't sleeping at my house that night because my mom had already been texting Cody my husband that if she saw me with my kids she was gonna call CPS and we were afraid that she was gonna act on it because she was incessant she kept texting him and saying how he needed to take me to the hospital and how she could call the ER on the way and how when she did get to see me again because I was like coaching soccer or something I'm not sure where where I was when she was like oh I think they went to the soccer game and I went like I think I drove somewhere with Capri and then they like ended the soccer game that my mom and dad who are divorced went to together because they're conspiring probably and then she was texting my mom after or my mom was texting Cody afterwards and saying like just tell me before you go back to her I want you to have some physical support there and I think we need to intervene and I don't think your kids are safe and Cody's just like whatever but then how do you talk to a crazy in-law how do you talk to a crazy mom who texts your husband that you're insane like, he, do you think he needs help? He's, he's 41. He's big. I'm five foot nine. He's six foot one. He's got, like, a lot, like, I'm not gonna say more than 50 pounds on me. More than 70 pounds on me. He's way stronger than me. He can lift me up. I don't have any weapons. I'm nonviolent. I've never hit anyone. I've never hurt anyone. My sister broke my foot when I was in college because she was mad at me. She stepped on my foot and then punched me in the face and I fell backwards and it broke my some toe, some bones under my baby toe on my foot. My sister did that to me. She's big too. She's, I'm not going to say because I don't want to incriminate her right now. But if she is behind this, then I will. And she would know why I would say that. Anyway, I'm trying to think of what I was saying before that. Oh, I've never hurt anyone. Never hit anyone. Never gotten into trouble. I've traveled the entire world. I've traveled many countries. I've done many things. I've been an alternative school teacher. I've gotten a lot of background checks. I was a fucking teacher. Then I'm a stay-at-home mom. I volunteer in my daughter's classroom. I'm in a lot of extracurricular activities with my kids. A lot of adults have seen me, seen me interact with kids. I coach two soccer teams. All the parents know me. As far as I know, they all like me. I've got a lot of character witnesses. But one woman who has abused me my whole life was able to manipulate the legal system using a welfare check loophole. It wasn't really a welfare check. It was, hey, I have inside information that my daughter... Is planning to murder her children. Which I just assume how she said it. Something like that. Because CPS told Cody. That the source that called in to CPS. 
said that they had inside information that I was planning to murder my children. I don't know how that relates to YouTube. If you look at my YouTube videos, they're really good. They're just my kids. And then I have some poetry, but my poetry is about childhood abuse. It's not about my kids. So. That's why I think she got mad that I was talking about child abuse. And she's like, there's no way this is me. This has to be her about her own kids. But no, I'm not the one who hides my kids from anyone who could help them. My kids are involved in a lot of things. They have a lot of good relationships with a lot of people, a lot of adults. They have good connections with their family on my husband's side. I tried to introduce my kids to my parents in Burley, and look what happened. I introduced them seven weeks and one day before I got arrested. Seven weeks earlier on the Sunday, I took my kids to Burley because my mom had never met my three-year-old. Then they all of a sudden start to decide that my parents are going to start hanging out again after they've been divorced for four years because they came to meet my son together at my mom's house. Then my dad and mom are hanging out again. <clears throat> and then, then they offered a babysitter. I'm like, no, I'm not comfortable with that, but you can come to their soccer games if you want. And they're like, okay. And then they offered a babysitter again. I'm like, no, <laughs> thank God I have that in text messages. I'm not comfortable with that. I should just print all these text messages. That should get me out of jail free card. But it doesn't take away the trauma that they've inflicted by putting me in the psych ward. The PTSD of getting arrested. I have new PTSD. I already had the PTSD for my mom and dad. But now I have new PTSD that I have to figure out how to handle. Because now I would already... Like, when I got pulled over, because this was Cody's job to renew our registration on our cars. Because I don't do car stuff. And plus I have ADHD and I can't remember and I hate doing that and he doesn't care. But he forgot to register to renew our registration on our car when we were in Idaho Falls. Um, we moved here in August, so before August sometime, I don't remember when. But we were in Idaho Falls and I got pulled over. And I don't speed, so I was like, what the heck? So I started shaking I had just got home from the gym. Or I was on my way home from the gym and I was shaking. And they pulled me over and it was two women, cops, and... They asked for my documents and I'm like shaking. I'm like, okay. And I'm just like trying to like, like, okay, I'm sorry. I just got home from the, I'm just going home from the gym. I'm, I'm, if I'm shaking, I just have a lot of adrenaline. And that's what I said, but I'm terrified of cops. I mean, I, yes, I did just finish my exercise, but I was just like, why am I shaking this like this? Got my documents and they're just like, okay, well, your registration's expired. I'm like, okay, okay, I'm sorry. That's my husband's job. I like, I don't know. That's not my job. I, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, look here. You can see my skull fracture. I talked about that. Sometimes it's hard to see, but right now you can see it. It's this crack. There's a crack here. See? You can see it come down here. Wraps around and then it shatters right here. Can't really show you that part, but here you can see the line. Jink. And it goes up. I'm tracing it. See it? There you go. There's the line. See it? Yeah, you can clearly see that. I'm trying to catch this on video because there's my crack. <coughs> like if I do that over here, you're not going to just get a line. You can't just create a line in your head. It's right there. There's my crack. And it goes up into my skull. See that? And my counselor was like, when did you get the skull fracture? I was like, I don't know. Look, look at that line. So that's why this side of my face is not, the cheekbone doesn't match. And this one I have this bone that like kind of juts out. And then over here, this bone is like smashed and it goes down into my jaw. Look, you can see right here, there's a problem. Here. here it looks attached but here watch you can see this is just mush it's not really attached that's why this side kind of droops because of my skull fracture like you can kind of tell somehow I'll prove that maybe I'll go get an x-ray and prove that I have a skull fracture see all the way down I'm getting beaten as a child all the way down right here is where it splits there. See that little crevice? And do you see how this little divot right here? My mom would say, she planted the story that I fell out of the shopping cart when she was grocery shopping. Because my face used to get, it used to be red permanently when I was little. And then whenever I'd cry, I'd go, and the whole side of my face would go red. All of this would be red. Look, there's my crack. 
and she used to be, she used to say, um, she didn't take me to the hospital because she thought they would take me away. She was like, and it was an accident, so I didn't feel like it was a problem. Ha, ha, ha. I repeat these stories because I know that I talk for a long time. It's already been 20 minutes, but I don't care. I repeat them so that someone will hear them. And how my little sister, Jessica, had the back of her head as mush, my mom said. She said she fell in the bathtub, which I don't believe. And she didn't take Jessica to the hospital for her supposed skull fracture because she thought she would get taken away too. And since it was an accident, she didn't take her in. That's not how accidents work. If you're innocent and you tell the truth, they won't take your kids. And why do you want them to not take your kids if you're abusing them? Hear that whine. See it? I don't usually search for that line to come out, but when I'm trying to prove that I was abused and I have some weird scars, look at that little indentation right there. That used to be gray, like a bruise color right here. Never healed. There's like a flat part right here. So when this got bam, broken, boom, whenever that happened, caused a crack, something in my head. There's this part that's flat. This part's not really held up. See, it's not the same. It's a little similar, but there's some problem with my jaw back here. And this goddamn skull fracture. <clears throat> From abuse, I don't know if I've mentioned first abuse before the cops beat me up for having PTSD of childhood abuse and trauma and dissociation because I could go somewhere in my brain when my parents were abusing me and slamming my head into windows and doors and walls and counters and bookshelves and dressers and edges of anything and whatever they could and slamming me into the chest, kicking me, kicking me, kicking me, kicking me, pulling my hair. Man, they love to do that. Roughing me up, laughing. <laughs> you like this? Is this fun? Is this fun? Like, I don't know why. It's so weird. Isn't that gross? It just makes me feel disgusting. And he'd like bob his head as he was doing this stuff. Like he was having a really good time. Like it was so fun for him to beat his, his daughter, who he called his son, because he doesn't really like daughters. He doesn't like girls. He likes boys and men, and he thinks women are sluts and trash. So he called me his son, but then he'd also beat me. And I have to say all this because my kids are... In Jeopardy, if I can't look the part, if I can't look not crazy, like apparently I looked crazy enough for the cops to beat me for two hours. If I can't look sane enough for the CPS people because I have past trauma that spans decades, what are they going to do? Take my kids? Because I can't prove that I'm abused? I'm terrified. I'm trying to get everything out so that if something happens and I do go crazy because my mom has succeeded in getting my kids away from me, at least someone retroactively could go back and look at all my evidence and be like, wait a second, this lady honestly was an abuse victim. She was abused since childhood. She said it 75 times before they arrested her because she looked nuts when the CPS lady interviewed her and her friends and her in-laws and her husband and her children and... Everyone that should have been abused when I was a kid, I mean interviewed when I was abused as a kid, but I hid when it was my turn to have an interview at CPS when my brother was a baby because she told me that his fate would be worse and I would never see him again and I wouldn't know what they even did to him if I let CPS know what she did. So I hid it because I was a teenager and I was terrified that she was right. I believed her. And then she called CPS on me and said I was going to murder my kids. <clears throat> the more I say it, the easier it is for me to just say. Because at first I was like, no. No one thinks their own kid will murder their own grandchildren. Like, that's not a real thing. You're not going to call the police and have them arrest your daughter who's 35. Because you think think she's gonna murder your grandkids you think I'm capable of murder is it because I left the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints of which you belong and used to torture me on Sundays and where I would have to sit if I were late to church I'd have to sit on the couch infinitely if I were late 
that why you think I am capable of murder? Because I don't torture my children with religion? I don't understand how any person who birthed another human, like maybe Hitler's mom, maybe Hitler's mom would be like, hey guys, I think my son might be planning to like gas chamber all of these Jews here. Like, okay, I could see how at some point Hitler's mom might be like, yeah, I think Hitler might kill someone. I can get, I can get there. Yeah, I could see that. He's a very angry, yelly type guy who's talking about racial superiority or whatever. Down with black haired people and big whatever. I get that. How Hitler's mom could do that. Why is mine? Why did mine do that? Is it because I talked about childhood abuse? Is it because I talked about the rage inside of me from being a little girl who was locked in a basement, beaten, psychologically tortured, put through medical experiments they weren't really experiments but they were medically unnecessary procedures maybe they were experiments and the steroids I was put on when I was about eight that made me gain 30 pounds in a month do you think that's medical neglect or medical abuse she has it recorded that I gained 30 pounds in 30 days when I was hospitalized and put on steroids because she said my asthma was out of control is that medical abuse yet or do you think it's just as fine? It's just such a mystery to me. I'm alone. I'm contacting all these lawyers and no one's calling me back. I'm like, come on. I don't know who I'm calling. I don't know who to call to find out which lawyer I need. And I shouldn't give away all my game plays or whatever you call it, my strategy. But I don't care. I want the truth out. I want justice. I can't be with my kids anymore because I have PTSD. New one. A new one. I was parenting fine until last Tuesday. I mean Monday. 5-2. May 2nd, 2022 at 2.31 in the morning. I was parenting fine up until then. My daughter is six and a half. Six and a half years I've been fine. Never dissociated. Never run from cops. Because why would I have run from cops? Why would cops be at my door? I have a pho phobia of cops. Why would they interact with me? I'm a law-abiding citizen. I stutter because I used to stutter when I was a girl. But I can't parent anymore. And I have to give my children to other people to parent because I, I don't have the ability. I have, I have br problems with my brain because I don't trust myself. Because... I am afraid that I'm going to get arrested at any minute. My husband has been home from work. This is his second week home since I got arrested early Monday morning. This is week two. That'll be about $4,000 in missed wages. At the end of this week, that's take-home pay because he makes a solid six figures. Damn. Why would you do this? Why would you destroy another person's life? And it's not another person, it's the same person. Why would you stalk me? Let me go. You don't talk to me anyway. You haven't talked to me since you tried to put me in a homeless shelter when I was about 26? 25, 26? When you said I was crazy for talking about the abuse my dad did when I was 10. And you said, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Who you been talking to? Your Aunt Lisa? Who you been talking to? Your Aunt Lisa? You're crazy. You're crazy. I'm putting you in a homeless shelter. I'm turning off your phone. And I didn't have a car because I just got hit by a semi. That's when I stopped trusting you. I tried so hard to be so good, but then I knew you were willing to put me in a homeless shelter. And turn off my phone so I couldn't contact anyone because I was vulnerable because my car had gotten total and I 
didn't want to sue the semi driver because I don't like to sue people. I like to earn my money. I don't like to get upset. I don't like to have to fight. I don't like to have to yell. I don't like to have to make people feel sad. But now I'm not safe and I can't parent my children because I'm traumatized. I'm looking out my window. I have to have my window open so I can hear and the window blinds open so I can see. I have to lock all my doors. I can't be alone with my children because I'm afraid something's going to happen and I'm going to get arrested. Or I'm afraid that I can't keep them safe anymore because I don't know how. Because if someone's willing to come arrest me in the middle of the night, how do I ever know if I'm ever safe again? So I have a big problem. She's ruined my life. And I'm saying she, if this is wrong, if I have a different stalker, then I will apologize for the current accusation of abuse, not for the past accusations of abuse. Those are unchanging because I was there for that. But that's why I assume that this one is her because I'm like, it's got to be you. Who else would abuse me like this? It's got to be the person who's always done it. My mom and my dad. My dad's the physical brute. My mom's the psychological mastermind. So I assume it's my mom because she's the one who tried to damage me and torture me psychologically and would sing sweet voice words when she should be yelling them but she used her voice in the wrong way to scare me because it was weird she'd be like oh like when she should be ah. and then she'd laugh when she was trying not to laugh my parents used the wrong like sounds they laugh when you're like, they're going to kill me. They smile when they're hurting me. They use a sing-song, cool, sweet voice when they're taunting me that they're going to kill me and abuse me and hurt me and torture me and have him beat me. Like, they just did everything backwards. And no one believed me, not even my own siblings. And I didn't care. I was like, well, at least I saved you from it enough that you didn't even know. Because you were so little, my youngest siblings. I am still glad that I saved them from that. I couldn't save them from everything, but I did my best. And I was pretty young. I'm so sad. Why would a mother do this to her own daughter? She doesn't know me. I know, but... Why would you try to hurt someone? If you really thought that you had grandkids in danger, which I don't think you did. But if you did think that, wouldn't you try to befriend the grandchildren? Or befriend the grand... Or befriend your own daughter? Or check with my in-laws who see my kids every week? Or check with my husband who lives with me and sees my kids every day? And he's just like, dude, this is not a concern. And she just went off the deep end. That she knew, even though she'd only met my kid seven weeks and one day earlier, she still thought I was capable of killing him or my other three, two, my all three of my kids. Because she met him once, seven weeks earlier, and decided to like read my blog or my YouTube videos or something, and something made her think I was going to kill them. Why does she think that she has a smarter brain than everyone who knows me and sees me for the past... Seven, eight, ten years. I don't talk to my mom because she tried to kill me. She tried to have my dad kill me. She tried to put me in a homeless shelter. She abused me. She hurt me. She lied about me. She gossiped about me. She did everything she could to destroy me. She told me no one on earth has ever loved me, including her, and that God just put me in her family because he knew that she was the only one who could handle having a child like me and that no one else would ever love me. And that I was unlovable and unlikable and that there were so many things wrong with me. And yeah, I don't have any friends. That's true. She's always told me that. And it's true, I don't. I have a different brain. I know that. But I'm my own friend and I'm conscience free. I've, I don't lie. I'm an honest person. Overly honest if you've listened to any of these hours long monologues about please free my my name please clear my name and free me
Can you imagine if this happened to you? What would it be like for you if so sad to me. That's all I feel. I just feel really sad. It, it just it makes you wonder why someone would hate you so much, you know? Like, what's so bad about me that makes you hate me? Is it really my mouth? You really don't like free speech that much? Don't like me to talk about child abuse. What you did. Why? Why not just say sorry and let me speak? It's so confusing. Why would you do that to me? Why did you drug me when I was little? Why did you give me Dramamine on car rides? I would never drug my kids. I would never give them Dramamine if they're not nauseous. Which they're not. Why would you give me drugs when I didn't need medicine? Why did you love talking to people about my medical problems? That they believe. And they're like, that is so crazy, Tracy. It's so weird how your kids have these weird things. I just can't believe it. You're such a God's mystery miracle. He must really trust you to give you all these children and bless you with such imperfect children that have all these issues. That you create. I don't even like going to the doctor. I don't even like going for my exams with doctors because I just feel like they're going to lock me up. I get sweaty palms and my heart rate goes up and it's just really not fun. It's just not fair. Why? Just leave me alone. You didn't think I was going to kill my kids. Why did you go there? How did that help you? Did you do it to show someone that you were tough enough to do it? Did you want to show your friend that you weren't the abusive parent that I say you are? We're trying to prove, oh, I'm not. Watch, I'll go call the cops on her. Watch. She's crazy. You don't, don't believe her. She's nuts. These allegations aren't true. Well, I'll get her locked up. By saying that I'm going to murder my kids, Tracy. And then she's gone radio silent. So does that mean she knows she's guilty? Does me calling her out mean she's going to do another allegation against me? Hers are unfounded, mine are founded. What a nightmare. This was my childhood, but I didn't have a video camera. I just had a notebook and a pencil. Well, actually, pens. I had a lot of gel pens. That was my favorite. I love to write. So, luckily, I have a ton of notebooks that I write, or I did write. And I put in enough boring stuff that if they did look through, they wouldn't have seen all the abuse. I would have just seen, I went to track, and then I went to this, and I ate this, and I'd had this, and da-da-da. And then I put the truth in there, too, and mixed in. Also, I was thinking earlier how <clears throat> when I was younger, we had family videos. And then they disappeared. And I looked for them for years. And I'd ask my mom, where are these videos? She's like, I don't know, I never saw them. But I distinctly remember watching them, even in Idaho, when I was like 11, 12. And then they were gone. And I would be like, where are our family videos from growing up? She's like, oh, I don't know, maybe someone took them. I was like, no, that's not right. And I've always been wondering, what was on that that she didn't want me to find out again? And it, was, it didn't even seem like anything too crazy. It just was like my childhood. And I'm like, where, where did those videos go? I know I saw them. Why did my videos disappear? And why did you tell me I had no baby pictures and then I found them? What is in these pictures that I don't see yet? What was in those videos that I didn't quite understand that she was trying to hide, that they're gone? They, Those disappeared when I was a teenager. I'm 36 almost. 
And they've never come up. My siblings and I love to look through old pictures and we like share old videos that I've taken since I was a teenager and I put up on my YouTube channel. We would love those kind of things and we haven't found them. They were on VC VHS or whatever, VHS tapes, kind of used to rewind, but they're gone. I don't think you just throw those away if they're your only memories of growing up. I just think it's weird. I'm like, why'd she, what'd she do with those too? And why does she always lie about everything? And I just want to assure my own child in my heart who's heartbroken that I'm doing all this talking. But I wouldn't have ever talked about my mom in this way. I would have talked about abuse, but I wouldn't have been so determined to say everything that she'd done except that she's attacked my children and I have to keep them safe. Just how I was willing to protect my brother more than myself. I'm equally willing to protect my three children and Cody. He's traumatized. He's not sleeping because he says he has to keep watch at night in case they come back. And he and my counselor are like, please stop making videos. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, this is hard. But I'm not going to stop until I've said everything there is to say. And a lot of it's repetitive until it stops weighing on my brain. And when it stops weighing on my brain, maybe then I can be done. I repeat what's on my brain. Cody can't handle it if I just tell him all this stuff because he gets so overwhelmed and there's nothing you can do. It's the past. There's nothing he can do. He feels like he failed. Protecting me from her. He didn't. She's very smart and manipulative in those ways. I'm smart too, but not in the devious way. I just like to help people and I would never hurt someone. But you made my husband sad and you made my kids worried because I didn't see them for like 10 days. And I can't be their mom right now. I just have to be someone who's working on herself. I'm not even here. Because Cody's taking care of them and he had to go get some help with them because he hasn't had a break. And he hasn't been sleeping. So he went to go take them somewhere to get watched where he can take a nap and I can stay here. That sound fair? Not really. But when this sadness goes away and my rage poetry comes back and my snark comes back and I get to say all the funny things about my husband and making fun of men because that's where my true passion lies. Like, I'm passionate about men. I love men. Especially hot, nice quiet men. <laughs> I'm like a reverse sexist dude, but about, I don't know. <sighs> I love men, but I also have to make fun of the institution of men that have created a world where women are a little invisible and where cops can beat up moms because moms, moms say lies. I've got to fix that kind of world because this is not okay. And then I have to listen to my videos and hear my own voice and say, okay, if I'm the only one hearing me, at least I'm hearing me. I've got hours to spend because I'm not parenting. My husband can't go to work. We both can't sleep. I sleep in the day when it's bright out and I wear my bracelet in case I get arrested. So hopefully they won't beat me as hard. They can read, I don't know. We don't know if cops can read or if they can just get angry and beat people with too tight of handcuffs. Why would you do that to your kid? Would you do that to Hitler? Like, I'm like, mm, did Hitler's mother love him? I don't know. Did he hate his mother? Wasn't she Jewish or something? I feel like his mom was Jewish, but maybe that's, I don't know. I don't really study Hitler. I just talk about him because it's a word that strikes up big feelings and that's what poetry is. And that's what 
speeches and acting is it's getting feelings evoking feelings by talking about words that's why when I say penis and you get mad or I say fuck and you get mad or I say Hitler and you get mad it's more powerful than my dad who beats me because sticks and stones can break my bones but words are the only thing that can actually hurt you isn't that funny? They try to teach you it's the opposite. Isn't it sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me? Or something like that. It's actually not true. Sticks and stones do break bones, but that's not as painful as words. And blows and hits and strikes and chest blasts and kicking and slamming heads into items and objects and stuff is not as painful as me saying penis and fuck in front of my kids. Or whatever else I said. I don't know. I'm not sure. But words are more hurtful and words can get you beat up. But we need to defend free speech even if we don't like it.